amazing how cheaply you can pick up vehicles like this, especially public service vehicles. I got this one for free. I'll tell you how we did it when we get back to the garage. Well, the one cool thing about fire trucks and ambulances and public service vehicles, you can usually get them pretty cheap because they're either pretty far, or pretty far worn out or just nobody wants them anymore. Well, that was the case with this one. This was uh, bought by Warner Brothers to be their uh, studio fire truck. This is the top of the line model. It was American LaFrance, uh, overhead cam, a V12 engine. It was the most powerful engine produced in America up to that time, 265 horsepower, just like a Duesenberg. And it was so expensive to produce, the company almost went broke. Uh, quite sophisticated, as I said, overhead cam. And uh, it was the first aerodynamic fire truck. It was the first wind tunnel tested fire truck. Prior to this, most fire trucks had their ladders and stuff hanging off. This one had everything inside. And as I said, Warner Brothers bought it in 41. Then in the early 50s, they donated it to the city of Burbank. In the middle to late 60s, Burbank gave it to the airport, which left it out at the end of the runway. It's kind of a windbreaker to keep dirt and dust off the runway. And then after 9-11 happened, they passed that law. You can't have anything that blocks a runway or something people could hide behind. So they were going to throw it away. It had four flat tires, and it was like a kind of mastodon sitting over on its side. And they said, hey, Jay, you want this thing? And I said, if you can get it out of here, you can have it. So we dragged it back to my shop. We put it up on the lift, dropped the pan, a little bit of sludge in it. But you know, being a fire truck, it's built to aircraft quality standards. Four uh, distributors, huge radiator. We put gas and oil in it, and it fired right up. It's only got 11,000 miles from new. In fact, it was never even registered, so I'm the first owner, which is kind of cool on it. Uh, it took a lot of sandpaper and, you know, to get this thing back in shape. But you know, being a fire truck, as I said, it, it's not supposed to break down. So with four distributors and this gigantic radiator and water pumps and everything else, it can run all day. It's, it's pretty much understressed in this application. So doing the chrome and doing the paint, that was the toughest part of it. My buddy did this pinstriping all by hand. It looks like a decal, but it's all done by hand. What we wanted to do, we wanted to, didn't want to keep it as a fire truck. We wanted to make it into a kind of an emergency vehicle to pick up motorcycles when we break down. So what we did is we got, big, got rid of the big water tank in there. That was a ton and a half. Took the water tank out. And what we wanted to do was make a, uh, we wanted to make a lift gate. We had a couple of lift gate companies come out and said, no, you can't make a lift gate. It won't work. So Bernard sat down and said, we can make a lift gate out of it. But we wanted to keep the integrity of the vehicle. So what we did, we cut all this away. And by opening this and then here, then you drop this down like that. So when your bike breaks down, just put the lift down, drive it right up on there. So you got the wheel stop up there. We got seats on the side. And the uh, most practical vehicle I own. Come on, we'll go for a ride. The nice thing is you can take everybody you know, look. All right, let's say you're driving along, you see a little bit of traffic up ahead. You just do this. Wow, a fire truck! So, you want to blow off a Ferrari? That's what you get.